<clears throat> hello, hello. My name is Luisa Heinzel and I'm a certified paper splattering master. <laughs> yes, I am. And today we are delving very deeply into the details of paper splattering, both in theory and practice. <laughs> Welcome to another video of my Junk Journal Bucket List series here on my YouTube channel. I'm celebrating the month of February as my month of birth and I have several different videos which come from my Junk Journal Bucket List. Meaning on my Junk Journal Bucket List there are things that I always wanted to try regarding to junk journaling, things that I couldn't do in the past because of, you know, not enough time and so on. And on that list, which is, to be honest, only in my head, but that doesn't matter, uh, it's existing, <laughs> there are also things that I always wanted to make a video about because you have asked several different questions about different topics and I never had the time or there wasn't the right point to do that and those videos are all in this junk journal bucket list series and also in a playlist which you can find linked below this video so that you can watch everything that you perhaps have missed if you are new to my channel yeah <laughs> Really sorry. I had so much trouble with this intro because I had to, you know, I wanted to be serious so that it is funny at the same time because, you know, English is not my mother language and I'm really trying to learn new things and I also try to learn to be funny in English. <laughs> And I hope that that could work, uh, that that uh, has happened in the in the intro, because so many of you have written below the other bucket list videos that you had much fun with those videos as well, and that you have laughed, and that I was funny. And of course, I want to continue with that. I mean, I don't want to, you know, do that like an actor or something. I am funny, I think, and I have really am in a really good mood today. I don't want to yeah act like an actor but <laughs> it's really hard to do that in english and i really have to concentrate that i don't uh, talk uh, weird shit uh, you know that has happened in the past as well <laughs> so today we, <laughs> yeah we are no, we are not going to talk about the word that i have accidentally without knowing what it means i have used that in another video <laughs> if you know you know <laughs> We are not talking about that. So what I want to do today is I want to show you different tools, especially tools, but also mediums you can use to splatter to paper or like, you know, ephemera, like cards, journaling cards or tickets or whatever. It can be any like paper surface that you can imagine. There have been a lot of questions. Um, on the one hand, which mediums shall I use on which kind of surfaces and which tools shall I use to splatter? And there have been a ton of questions about this paintbrush because this is the paintbrush I always use to splatter. Ooh. I'm sorry, to splatter to projects, no matter what it is, no matter if I want to have a whole background splattered or only like, for example, tiny areas, like a little accent on something. I always use this brush and I want to show you in this video the advantages of such a brush. And I will also compare this brush <clears throat> with other brushes. Also, a one which looks very similar to the one I use. I mean, there's not such a big difference. You could think, okay, it's the same shape. Perhaps that will also work. I will show you what the difference is. And I also want to show you um, why this is the best thing, no matter, I mean, for me, yeah, everything I say in this video is only my, my own opinion, of course, why this is the best brush for me, no matter which medium I use. Okay, so we are going to talk first about <clears throat> something that could be obvious if you are new to junk journaling or, you know, <laughs> new to splattering to paper. <laughs> I want to use 
a paper for um, demonstrating this, which comes from my Etsy shop. I have shown you this in one of the last videos already. This is called Alcohol Inked. There's a volume one available with these orangey and uh, red colors. <clears throat> so it's like, you know, alcohol ink, but fake because you can print it at home. And who? And there's also volume one with, uh, sorry, volume two with different colors. Um, you can find these in my Etsy shop. I will link them down below for you so that you can check them out. And you can get 43% off on both of these sets during February. Because, you know, it's my month of birth and I want to give you a little surprise and a little gift so that you can get these and there are uh, with the discount uh, Louisa <laughs> keep calm <laughs> you have please you have to use this code here to get the discount you can just put that into this little box at the end of your order and then the 43 percent will automatically um, apply on your shopping uh, basket it's it's not basket I know that but I just don't know the word <clears throat> There are also two freebies available, one from this set and one from the other set, so that you can also first, if you want, try out how they print with your printer and on the paper you use, so that you have like a little test page. But of course, uh, you can also uh, use them for other things, not only for testing the printing. Yeah? The link to the freebies is also down below in the description box. And I use this because... Um, this is matte photo paper and um, some of the mediums that I want to use for splattering today have different, um, yeah, a different appearance on this paper. They react differently than on normal copy paper. But like the technique and my thoughts behind um, splattering would be the same on copy paper. Yeah, I just used this because, yeah, to be honest, it was laying around here on my desk, <clears throat> still laying around on my desk. And I thought, why don't I just use this to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate here today? And with the matte photo paper, you can also see how the mediums react on this, especially spray stain, distress ink and distress oxide ink and um, oxide spray. But as I said, for the splattering itself, it wouldn't be a difference. So <clears throat> what I very often see is that people use the nozzle of such a spray bottle. And you can hear I already breathe relatively deeply because that is not my favorite thing to use and I will show you why. I will just, please don't uh, be scared, <laughs> I will just zoom out a little bit so that you can see the situation on my desk. Look, this is the Tim Holtz media mat, this glass mat, <clears throat> and I've just put the media surface mat on top here, yeah, but the glass mat is just underneath what you know from my other videos. And this is DNA4, and as you can see, here is relatively much like free space. I will move these out of the way, because I already know what's going to happen in a second. But I want you to see this angle of my desk, so that you can already uh, also see what happens if I use the nozzle of this. Let's say I want to have a background page with crushed olive splatters on it and I want the whole page splattered. I can come to the idea to use this and just splatter on here. I'm really close to freaking out at the moment because yeah it's you can guess it's splattering to all of these things there because it's just so uncontrollable and it's it's yeah <laughs> not so nice. The splatters get relatively nice. I would say this is a nice background, but as you can see, those splatters are also, mm, yeah, they are big somehow. And they are almost too big for my taste when I look at the whole page and the details of this alcohol inked area there. If I try to get smaller splatters, with this thing, it's relatively hard to do 
Oh, I again said relatively. I don't know if it is used in the right context. But as you can see, that doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, I have a problem with that word. I have to, this is like nearly hurting my finger because I have to hammer onto this thing so hard with my finger to get these like smaller splatters that it is, you know, and now, oh, that is also a good thing for demonstration. Look, what just happened is I accidentally pressed this and this happened. Yeah, I was relatively, relatively, ah, oh, I was <laughs> really careful. But this happened, and imagine this was a page in your journal that you want to have beautiful in the end, and perhaps you are a person that don't like who don't likes you know, like stained fingers, then you would have a problem in, in this moment as well. I don't say that the result is like you know one hundred percent bad, but all of this shit here in my eyes, is not so nice. If I now look to the things I have here and I take a fresh and clean paper towel now to demonstrate that and I clean these things. Look here, for example, there are splatters on my ink pad. There's even a tiny little bit on my swatch here. You can see that I have a lot of this spray stain on my other tools. And to be honest, I don't want to have that. Why do I have this media mat here? Just because I want to protect my desk. And for what is this when I splatter with the nozzle of this and splatter to all of these things? Yeah, that is not handy for me. Here, can you see? On the left, there are laying the rest of the papers, and even to this page, there have come some splatters. Even if it's like really far away, this is about like 25 centimeters or so away from my paper. Oh, sorry, it's 18 centimeters away, meaning a big distance, isn't it? And I have like, yeah, made my whole table dirty. And if we talk about waste of medium let's just clean this which is like you know ne uh, which has uh, landed next to the paper and please look how much I have on here this is all wasted if you wouldn't take like you know a card background or something and dip that in to save the medium and put it onto a paper then this would be wasted So I've just zoomed in again so that you can see the paper better. Another thing that you could, of course, take to splatter, but that is also not my first choice, <laughs> is the nozzle of a mica stain spray. And to be honest, when I see people using this, I get pain in my whole body because the nozzle of this is even more uncontrollable than the nozzle of the spray stain because it's bended like this. I want to quickly go into a tiny detail of this in case you are new to these kind of bottles, meaning the bottles of the mica stain spray. If you are new to these and if you only know these, you could think what happened to the nozzle here. Because if you compare these, you can see that the spray stain nozzle is very straight. And this one is bended and it looks like it's an accident or something that went wrong. But this is completely normal. Um, there are many people who ask, shall I bend this so that it is straight or shall I cut this because it obviously had, has not enough space in the bottle? No and no. Please just leave this exactly like it is because it is meant to be like this. That has to do with <clears throat> the components of the mica stain spray. When the nozzle is in the bottle here. <sighs> Wait, I'm so sorry. I'm just taking another spray uh, bottle here so that I can 
hold it like uh, this so that you can see that. So when the nozzle is in the bottle, <clears throat> then it's in here like this, isn't it? Meaning the end of this is touching the bottle from the inside somewhere here. And it's doing that because <clears throat> then this thing doesn't get clock, clocked so easily. Because when it's in here and this thing is touching the inside of the bottle here, it's like a, a safe space there. I don't know how I can say that in English. But the mica is here on the, on the bottom. And when you have the bottle in your shelf or somewhere, then of course the mica, the mica is here on the bottom and you have to shake it to mix the components of this spray. Can you see that? And if the nozzle would be like straight, it would be in the mica here the whole time and then it could get clocked very easily. That's the reason why the nozzle looks like this and that's the reason why this is normal. So don't bend it and don't cut it. And if you want to splatter with this thing, of course you could try this and uh, of course you can splatter with this, but it's like even more uncontrollable. I have the feeling that the splatters get tinier. You, you get bigger splatters when you have more on here, of course. And with the time, with, you know, uh, splattering more and more, then they get smaller. But I have the feeling, look, <laughs> that is really uncontrollable. That it is, like, annoying. Because you have big splatters in the beginning. And the more you make like this, um, the tinier the splatters get one uh, um, and at the same time the medium gets less on this thing but you also have to dip it in very often you know to get the whole page look nothing is coming out here anymore uh, you have to dip it very often into this thing until you get the whole page splattered if you want that and in my eyes the splatters they, they don't get nice you also get sometimes really weird arrangements of splatters i don't know if you have ever you know like analyzed your splatters <laughs> with really you know open eyes but look for example here can you see that the splatters are in a row here and here as well that looks really weird in my eyes when i want to make splatters to a project i want to have like you know a nice and really you know an arrangement of splatters like this here for example and i don't want to have these rows and here are even two rows in um, i mean next to each other on a really small space that looks silly in my eyes uh this only happened because you know it wasn't dry so please ignore that and another thing is um that i quickly want to mention but that doesn't has that doesn't have to do anything with splattering with the nozzle but it has to do with the medium if you use <clears throat> yes if you use mica stain spray or distress spray stain or oxide spray on matte photo paper yeah not on copy paper not on like high quality copy paper normal copy paper or whatever that happens only on on photo paper and i'm talking about matte photo paper like this is if you splatter with the mentioned mediums you can see that um you get some other colors around the actual splatters uh, not some other colors another color around the splatters i think that makes more sense it looks like a crater so you can see this lighter color around the actual splatter and the center is darker that happens only on matte photo paper i'm feeling like a broken record but <laughs> i have the feeling that i have to say that because some people have like you know listened with only one ear <laughs> in the past and then you have tried this on copy paper and you have wondered why the spray stand or also the oxide spray um, doesn't give you this this effect this only happens on matte photo paper and by the way on matte photo paper this is also waterproof
and we are talking about distress spray stain which is normally water reactive mm, and uh, normally you would you know uh, you would smear everything if you would add water here if you're wondering why here is a little bit of yellow you could perhaps uh, think she's cheating it isn't waterproof this is only a little bit of leftover from the ink but the rest is staying here if you take the excess off with a paper towel then the rest is waterproof and it doesn't move anymore but that's just a little side note but the thing is that you get these like bleeded effect here with the spray stain with the oxide ink and of course also if you would take an ink pad and you know do this add water take a brush and splatter with that if we would let this air dry then we would also get this like bleeding effect but in another color that would also happen but if you use this and water it takes a little longer and this effect with the other color with this different color is not so extreme with an oxide ink pad or an ink pad like with the spray stains or the oxide sprays yeah it, it's a little different but it will happen as well with the where is my oh i've just had it in my hands i'm so sorry with the mica stain spray it is somehow similar that when you have like mm, a porous surface like for example photo paper which soaks the medium relatively fast then you also have a little bleeding effect the mica itself stays in the shape of the splatter i'm just searching for a good um, example where you can see that really clearly please look at this splatter here in the middle in the center you can oh, it's not dry i'm sorry my camera can't catch that so well because you know the mica is shiny and when it's still wet the water is shiny as well somehow then you can't see it so good so i'm quickly drying this here with my heat tool so that you can see that better the center has the mica how do i have to hold this so that you can see that i want to have the light touching it can you see that mm. I'm the whole time talking about this little guy there in the green circle. The center is covered with the mica and this bluish thing around is what bleed it into the paper. That makes it, of course, on the one hand, really interesting. But on the other hand, at the same time, it looks not so elegant. It's a bit messy, isn't it? If you compare the others here, you know, it's it's um, not so visible on the smaller ones. As you can see there on the orange area, the bigger ones have more of this bleeding. But if you look at a single splatter really close, you can see that the, the edge is like a little fuzzy, like frayed or so. It's not a round dot of the medium. And for some projects, then ca that could be perhaps a little bit annoying. Imagine you had, where have I put those? Ah, oh, here. Imagine you have a vintage postcard like this one here, for example. And, oh, that is a good example because the bow here is like in this bluish color. We could easily imagine to splatter this color on here. Yeah, so because it fits really well. But imagine these splatters on here in this style, in this fuzzy style. That would, in my eyes, destroy this card a little bit. Especially if you think about the like cuteness and elegance of this girl. Also, this black background gives it like, you know, somehow an elegant feeling. It's like a treasure and this doesn't scream make me messy but these splatters in my eyes are really really messy and i don't want something like this on a card like this but of course there's a solution but 
uh, before we talk about the solution, and perhaps you might wonder, <laughs> why isn't she showing us the splattering with this brush and the ad advantages of this brush in the very beginning? Why do we have to wait such a long time until she, she comes to the point with the brush? That is really easy. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to watch something that you are not... Uh, That is, that is not informative, but I think at the same time, if you haven't seen this and the results with spritzing with the nozzles, you can't see the difference that this paintbrush makes. Or also, of course, other paintbrushes, because there's a difference between this and this and this and these. Yeah, And I want to show you, like the, in my eyes, not so handy things first so that you can really easily analyze the pro like the problems with this the problems i have and perhaps you agree with my arguments here so that you then in the end can see why such a brush is probably better yeah so that's the reason why i do it in this order so um, then you could think, okay, if splattering with the nozzles is not so nice, let's try to splatter with a brush. Um, let's just take the back side here. So I have different brushes here. Um, and to be honest, these two are like, you know, a little... This This is a bitch... <laughs> This is really a bitch when it comes to splattering. This is somehow a diva. This is, I would say, well, if I was on an empty island and this was the only brush I had there because this was, you know, it has fallen off from the boat, <laughs> which has taken me to the uh, empty island. And if I only would have this brush, it would be okay. And I would use it probably for splattering. But if I had the choice, I would always, always and forever choose such a brush. Exactly this one here. Why? Let's start with the bitch. <laughs> so, and let's use, let's use the same medium here. Let's use the spray stain again so that we can compare. Um... The tool, this, I, I mean, I want to compare this with this, spritzing with the nozzles, but I'm taking the same medium so that we can, you know, compare that directly. If I would use another medium, we wouldn't have a good comparison. As you can see at first glance, the paintbrush is soaking the whole thing from my media surface mat here. The whole medium is now in this brush. This brush was already a tiny little bit wet before I started recording this video, meaning I had this in my water glass to uh, clean it. And then I've just taken a paper towel. So it was like a little bit wet, still a little bit wet, but uh, not like soaked with water. So now the whole medium has been soaked by the brush and I will splatter on here. What has happened? The medium is in here. It doesn't come out. Why? Because the bristles of the brush have soaked everything and you have seen how much I have spritzed here. Meaning, if this doesn't come out, the, the brush needs to be loaded up with the amount of medium you've just seen a second ago here. That is a ton of medium. And if, if it doesn't come out here, Mm, that means at the same time it stays in here and if I clean my brush I waste what I just had here and imagine um, I mean with junk channeling or also card making how much do we splatter that is a lot and if I imagine that I always would waste this amount of medium ugh, I mean I'm not I'm not uh, a billionaire yeah so that is not acceptable for me but I want to show you that you of course can spritz with such a brush as well so let's take more of this and I have a little pain because <laughs> I need this uh, to demonstrate that but of course I want to demonstrate it and you know <laughs> as you can see nearly everything 
was soaked by the brush again. Meaning you can see how much of medium, how much medium um, fits into such a brush. That is a ton. But if I splatter here, I it's all on over my arm here. You can't see it, but I have like little raindrop feeling here on my arm the whole time. And as you can see, the splatters are tiny compared to the amount of medium we have in here. I'm just going to take another clean and dry paper towel and go over my arm here so that you can see what was on my arm. And this this also would be on my clothes. Um, if I, you know, I, I wear, like, can you see, a black uh, hoodie today, so you wouldn't see it. And this hoodie is also, you know, for crafting, and if it gets dirty, I, I don't care about it. But imagine you had a white uh, blouse or something, and you would have all of this on your clothes. And how the heck can I get, like, these, only these tiny splatters with, like, I think five or six uh, times of pressing this down. Yeah, I have used so much and it's just not getting bigger. I mean, the splattering is not, the splatters itself, themselves, get not bigger. Only if I use really a ton of the medium, I'm able to get bigger splatters. But as soon as I hammer with my finger to the paintbrush very hard I spritz it all over my arm can you see that and that is just annoying imagine you have for example an iPad or a TV or something like that on your desk I guess you don't want to splatter all over your technical devices uh, that is really you know <sighs> ah it, it it really kills my nerves a little bit. And now <clears throat> I also want to show you how much is in here. I mean, you could, of course, now take water and put that on here to get the medium out here. But look, all of this would be wasted. And here is still a ton of this in here. Can you see that? How much is in this paintbrush? And that is like, you know, something that I would, yeah, I, I can paint the whole page with, with only this, what is in here. That's not normal. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just wasting this, this stuff. So I will uh, put this aside to let that dry. And then later on, I will use this as collage fodder, of course. I don't want to waste this here just for this video. But, you know, I want to have that. Um, in my stash, perhaps I can do something else with that for another project. So that's why I call this paintbrush a bitch for splattering. This paintbrush is really good for other things. This is the brand Frau Holle und Da Vinci uh, and Da Vinci um, Florals Edition. I bought this in Rome. I don't know if that is. I think it's also available online. Um, but, you know, I, I really like this. I The paintbrush itself, but not for splattering. And that's the thing. I think you have perhaps some uh, brushes or something like that in your craft room. Also, you know, sometimes there happens a collection in your craft room. Yeah, You get a paintbrush from here. You get a paintbrush from there. Perhaps you also have paintbrushes from your parents or something like that. And then you have... All of these and you don't know, really don't know, no, you don't really know which paintbrush is good for what. And that's the same with this thing. I really like this wired end here because this is so sturdy. I'm like, Tim, I like to leave my paintbrushes in my water. So if I use them, they are in here and it can happen that they are like two days in here. But I want to have a quality that can handle this and this paintbrush is really really handy and really sturdy and it's durable and it is good but not for splattering yeah because it's not made for splattering that's the thing if you want to um just as a little example if you want to paint some like uh, watercolor style leaves or something this is just 
amazing. And because of this shape, you can really easily, without any, no, not without any practice, but with only a little bit of practice, this is probably not the right paper for this, but can you see, it's like, it's like so, it's perfect. This is not the right paper because it's, you know, it's not a watercolor paper. I would probably use another paper, but I don't want to criticize, cri crit criticize, is that a word? This paintbrush, it's really, really good. Yeah, I I'm feeling like a broken red record. This is good. <laughs> this is really good, <laughs> but not for splattering. So, um, yeah. What about this thing here? This paintbrush looks shape-wise relatively similar to the one that I always use for splattering. It's also in this shape and it even has these little guys here where you could think that this is good for splattering because the medium could stay on the tips of these little bristles here and you could at first glance think that is really good for splattering. But I mean it already has hair like a diva. <laughs> Doesn't it? So let's take the same medium, which is the, you know, um, crushed olive spray stain. Let's take this brush. As you can see, it doesn't soak so much of the medium, but if I want to take all of this, I need, you know, I need to move it around so that I can grab it. And with that, I have a really big surface here where the medium is spread around and that is perhaps not, not so handy as well because you know it's like everywhere here now let's take this and spread it <laughs> that was like medium pressure hammering more pressure If you want to have like a really tiny snowy effect, this brush could be good because as you can see, I could cover um yeah, pretty big surface here with tiny splatters which are nearly nearly approximately all the same size. This is of course, nice if you want to have, let's say you make a winter journal and you want to have like a really delicate snowy effect on the whole page. Then that is nice, but you also have it on your arms and everywhere because this is flying around the same like this. It's just crazy. It's everywhere. If I want to have bigger splatters with this, I would need way more of this medium and I would have to try to load this up which is not so easy because the bristles here I mean there are only a few here meaning the medium can't really stay here in these like thin things the most of the medium is going to stay I think that's my theory in this part here and that's why it's so hard to get bigger splatters. Ah, and to be honest, I I can't do it. I'm so sorry. I'm ruining my whole desk and and my 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 hoodie. Everything is is flying on here. If I hammer with my finger with more pressure, I can get bigger splatters. But it's it's going everywhere. It's everywhere here on my other. Um, I have some, ooh, some distress paint bottles here. It's over the over the whole thing here. And that is something I think you can lose the fun of making the of making something like this if you have a tool like this which wrecks your nerves. And if I see this, I also think if you practice to spritz with this bottle carefully and controlled, you can get a similar effect. If I take this and if I pray pr not pray. <laughs> it's not the perhaps it's time to pray to get rid of this. I'm sorry. That is of course not the right word. If I press this slowly 
and not completely, then I can get a really similar effect to this. You have to practice that if you try that, what I'm doing next for the first time and you get something like this. Please don't freak your freak. Just practice this. My finger makes a movement like this. And that is also the original speed. Yeah, it's just what I do in a second like this. I don't press this completely, just a little bit and really slowly compared to this where I do it like like so. And this is also the original speed. So let's try something like this by pressing really slowly, moving the bottle around and this looks not uh, this doesn't only look more interesting but it's also even more controllable than this and if you look at the whole page you couldn't tell the difference how we made this area and how we made this yeah that's my opinion and uh, with this you don't have wasted medium in your paintbrush which which is in here and then it will go into your sink when you clean this you won't have something like this which is yeah if you do it like this and clean it up this is wasted isn't it um i don't know if you have the nerves and always the time to take these puddles and press a paper into them to make collage fodder i mean imagine how often you splatter you always have this puddle imagine you would always take a paper and do it like this then you would have your whole room covered with collage fodder after one week yeah <laughs> so that is really not what i want and with this i can do this effect and get something like this without wasting anything to be completely honest there's a tiny little bit that has you know landed next to the paper but uh please just compare the amount yeah okay um so we have the diva we don't want to talk to her uh anymore so you have to go bye bye <laughs> so then you could also come to the idea to take a paintbrush like this so let's do that as well so this is one of these which are a little harder and you can see the shape is also you know like this rectangled shape i really don't know how this is yeah i don't know the the professional word for for this kind of brush but i think you know this is a little harder than the first one and the shape is different and the bristles also are different so if i take this you can see not so much medium gets soaked automatically here can you see that I have to, you know, take this and really carefully dip it in here to get all of this into my paintbrush? This was the same pressure like with both of the others when I splattered with those the first time. You can see there's coming out way, way more with like medium pressure like with the other ones. The splatters are really, really big but and you can also get smaller ones the longer you do this the smaller they get but look at this this and this why the heck is that so regular it's like also like line 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 why are they in those lines that is really weird and i experienced that also with this bitchy brush <laughs> only for splattering you um also get some kind of these lines and that is it's it's just it's not good you can try to get something in between but somehow it's like you know can you see that it's it's a line when i mm, let's do it here it's can you see that it's it's like an oval line it's not a round shape uh, do you know and if you imagine this what is in this little area here imagine you would splatter this for example um, let's say around the flowers here to make the flowers like a little bit more interesting then you would have this you know here like so for example 
I mean, that looks weird. That is not nice. But there's the solution. <laughs> of course, there's the solution. Um, until this point of the video, we have talked about the different kinds of tools we could use for splattering, meaning um, the difference between splattering with the nozzles and splattering with different kinds of brushes. Let's now talk about this brush in combination with these mediums, but let's also talk about different mediums, yeah? because until now <clears throat> we have splattered with ink-based mediums. Let's talk about also the surfaces, which you could have in mind. I mean, you should always have the surface in mind um, to choose the right medium, because not every medium is made for every surface, of course. So let's see. I will quickly clean this, and then we are going to take these postcards I already have prepared there. <clears throat> And I want to show you some tricks on, yeah, I don't want to say real examples because what I will do next is probably um, more than I would do for a postcard, a journaling card, a piece of ephemera for my junk journals. What I show you next, I will do really extremely on these pieces so that you can see the effect really, really good and that we don't have only like tiny areas where I have to, you know, hold the piece here like so and you see one splatter. Do you know what I mean? So this is going to be extreme in the end, but that's only because I want to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. And, you know, with the camera, it's always a little bit hard to show tiny details with your eyes. You can see tiny details way better than I am able to catch that with my camera. So I want to do different things. First of all, let's talk about the surfaces of these postcards. <clears throat> this is very glossy. It has something like a finish which is nearly like plastic. Um, you could also think about like photos which have these glossy surface. Yeah, everything that works for this also works for other glossy surfaces. That doesn't have to be a postcard, of course. We're talking about glossy, slippery, like plastic surfaces compared to something that is matte. And if you look really close, you can see that this is somehow porous at the same time. You can also check the the um, how porous something is if, if you look to the back side. And if you touch this, I mean, the camera can't really catch that. It feels really, yeah, you can, you can feel it that um, it soaks a medium really extremely. And you can also see that here there are tiny gaps that look different. This looks nearly like you would have added a layer of gesso, like clear gesso, but um, a really thin layer. Do you know what I mean? Then sometimes there are also these little irregular mm, things. I don't know, but I hope you can see that. Compared to this, which is completely matte. There you can't see these gaps in between. It's completely matte. Because the yeah the the finish of this material is closed, the surface is closed, and it doesn't have these gaps like the other postcard. Can you see that? And it is worth it to hold it against the light, like I do this here. I will take the glossy card as well, so that you can perhaps compare all of the three here. It's worth to hold it against the light so that you can really see the difference because sometimes it's not possible to feel the difference just by touching it. And if you see that, for example, you have a really glossy surface like this, you immediately know 
that it doesn't make sense to take these as your mediums to splatter. It doesn't make sense to take this or Distress ink. It doesn't make sense to take Distress Oxide Spray. Makes no sense because these mediums are not made to use on such a glossy surface. They will never dry there because they are not made for something like this. Uh, I don't want to ruin my postcards because these are all original postcards, but I guess... That even on, uh, yeah, this is a little bit, I uh, would say a little bit porous, but it's glossy at the same time somehow. It feels slippery. If I would use some of this on here, I assume that it will dry like you know with a heat tool or overnight but at the next day and i will not do it here because i won't i want i don't want to ruin this but i'm assuming that when i go over this with my finger after if it's uh, after if after it is dry i assume that it will still smear mm, and that brings me to a thought that I have to use different mediums for these surfaces and uh, that it is way easier to choose, let's say, one medium for splattering. And that is acrylic paint. Because... <laughs> That's good. <laughs> acrylic paint... <coughs> ah, I'm sorry. Acrylic paint can dry on the slippery surfaces. Yeah, Acrylic paint can dry on porous surfaces. Acrylic paint won't bleed on photo paper or papers which are similar to photo paper. In the beginning, I told you that this soaks relatively much if you use inked base mediums. But on here... Um, the ink-based mediums won't dry. Or here we are not so sure if they will smear after they are dry. Here we are sure they won't dry. So why don't we just use acrylic paint where we can be sure that it will dry on here. The other thing is, um, you can, of course, what what is, uh, I wanted to say something in between of what I just said and what I want to say next. Uh, ah, and the good thing, I know it, <laughs> the good thing is if you use the Ranger mediums, and I know that many of you do that, but of course that's for other brands as well, but with Ranger, of course, it's really cool because we have the color palette in different mediums, yeah, so we can say, okay, we make a Distress Oxide ink background, for example, and when we then <clears throat> want to splatter on that background with... Um, acrylic paint we have the possibility to use the matching acrylic paint because this is crushed olive and it's available in in paint oxide ink ink and other mediums so that we have the same color palette and it's really easy we don't have to mix and try out things we just can take the color and it is the color do you know what i mean but of course you don't have to use uh, the distress paints but you can also use like other acrylic paint. But the important thing is that you check how liquid this is. And then you can decide how much water you want to add to this to get the right... Um, it has to be liquid enough to be able to splatter. Yeah, I, I can't find the word at the moment. So um, what I have done is I have um, some of the Distress paints so that I have the matching colors to my ink pads and oxide ink pads and the sprays. But I also have two of these little guys where I have white and black acrylic paint in here mixed with some water. If you know the Ranger mediums, then you probably realize at first glance that these are the same little jars like those from the Distress Glazes. 
it's exactly like you know the same size and the same jar you can get these without anything in yeah without the glaze so just empty <laughs> they are sold sold separately by ranger and that is really cool because these are not only a good size for something like this acrylic paint water mixture but at the same time they are plastic meaning if i accidentally let them fall to my desk they won't break compared to a jar made from glass and i think it's really um, good if you have a small jar there are videos on my channel from the past where i have used a glass jar and it was bigger like you know from marmalade or something like that really big but that is not so good because on the one hand of course when this gets more empty the acrylic paint can dry here on the inside of this and the bigger the glass is the bigger the surface where you get dry acrylic paint uh, that is not not a sentence you know i think you already got it the smaller the jar the less dried acrylic paint you would have in here as you can see this is really close to be washed especially the lid here i wash this every time you know after it got empty i left this here for the sake of this video so that you can see that here on the on the lid in the inside it's already really dry and crusty and the problem is if you close this and open this then this could get loose and it could fall into your mixture and if you don't realize that early enough and you take your brush and you splatter to your project then it can happen that you get these little tiny pieces to your project and of course you don't want that because try to remove that if that happened it's nearly impossible without ruining the project so i can recommend a small jar plastic and you know clean it every time it got empty so what is in here this is just some normal acrylic paint that's this one but of course you could use any other black acrylic paint as well an alternative of course would be the distress paint black suit i don't have that yeah i don't have that color and i had this here i think i have this almost five years or so it seems to be a magic bottle it doesn't get empty because i don't use black acrylic paint so often but that is also the reason why i don't have the black suit acrylic paint because i want to use this up before i buy the black color from, from this from the distress paint yeah but um for the splatters themselves it doesn't make a big difference i think i would i it wouldn't make a difference at all if you consider the consistency of the mixture in here because the distress paint is really fluid that is because how is that said in english i think it's mm, there's no filler in this paint and that makes it so liquid please excuse if that is not 100 percent correct english but mm, you've just seen i mean we can just put a little bit of this on the mat so that you can see that and let's put this on here as well this is hmm, paintbrush let's take this one this is really liquid can you see compared to this let me just take another paintbrush so that i don't mix the colors i don't want to waste this and this is you know it's liquid as well but it's way way thicker than this because the components in this the the ingredients of this acrylic paint are different but what i'm trying to say is no matter if you have a liquid acry acrylic paint or a more harder you know not so liquid <laughs> acrylic paint um the only difference is that you add more water to something like this than to this mm, i made the experience with this black acrylic paint 
this is by Marabu, that sometimes if you don't have enough water, you get some really tiny like black lines when you splatter. So let me try to get this here. And now, now I have to clean this because I need the black thing here. So if I add only a little bit of water to this, let me see if I can get this here. Just put this out of the way. Yeah, look, you can, you can see there are those lines and even if you splatter more, you can see they are always, or uh, nearly always here, where, where the splatter, splatters got smaller, the lines disappeared. But here in the beginning, it looks like little hair. Um, and this looks artsy. And I really like this. And if I want to have this, I just take a little acrylic paint to my mat here. And I don't take it from the jar, because this is way more liquid. It's way more water in here. But if I want to have these lines, I just do it like I've just done it here. Put this to my um, mat here, add only a little bit of water, and then I get these uh, lines here. But these are like, you know, another kind of splatters. And in my eyes, they don't fit to every project. Imagine you would have something like this, let's say in white on this. I say white because black wouldn't show up so well here. But imagine you would have these like lines on here. That is the same thing I said a few minutes ago. In my eyes, these kind of this style of splattering would destroy the appearance of this image. Because everything is really detailed, really filigree. And if you would have these lines, it would make it yeah not so nice in my eyes meaning it depends on the project you want to splatter if you want to have this or if you want to have something like this mm, i think i never managed and <laughs> that is something that just comes to my mind i think i never managed to get these lines with the distress paint Let's see, if we don't add water, because then it's approximately like, like this. No, it doesn't happen. I think that's because it's, you know, it's just, it's different. The, the ingredients are different. You can see there are no hair, hairy things. Yeah, uh, that obviously means that you can't get these with the, with the distress paint. But, you know, this is something like not so important that you can get something like this in my eyes so um that's the one thing check the consistency of the dis uh, of the sorry of the acrylic paint you have and then decide how much water you want to add this uh, to want to add to this to the acrylic paint how to know how much water you want to add so this is approximately like a really thin yogurt Where's my brush now? So if you would, yeah, I don't know if you can see that when it drops down, uh, you can't really see that. It's, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really thin, but it's thin because this was, was thick in the beginning. Uh, if you want to splatter with this and mix it with water, you will, would need not so much water for the distress paint than for this acrylic paint. And that is also something that you have to try out and where you have to experiment a little bit until you have the right consistency for your mixture for the splatters. Uh, I also made the experience that, that with my black acrylic paint, um, somehow this gets thicker with the time, meaning somehow the water is getting less in here somehow and then it gets thicker with the time so that's also the reason why i always check the consistency be before i splatter um for my cards there i first want to use white 
because you know the cuts are relatively dark so let's clean this off and I want to show you different ways of splattering now let's say you have this card um, and here <clears throat> this is obviously a Christmas card you can see this Christmas tree and I guess <laughs> they could be sisters I guess it looks like they are singing something and here on the bottom it says um, herzliche Weihnachtsgrüße that means um, heartfelt Christmas greetings let's say you want to make a winter journal but not necessarily Christmas themed that is an, a constructed example now because I want to show you how to cover this writing up there can be postcards or things let's say you have like a junk postcard like from uh, an advertising mail stuff you do you know what I mean and there's something that says for example the company name or something not not something that is like nice like Christmas greetings is actually a nice writing isn't it it's nothing that would bother me in a normal journal but I need an example here so I want to show you how you could cover a writing that you don't want to have here with with just splattering but without having like a block of splatters here meaning and I have to explain that now because in a second I have to be fast so that the paint can't dry. I want to splatter here with bigger splatters and then let them get smaller to here so that it looks like it's snowing inside of this room around these women here. Mm. Of course, snow is in this case also only an example. You could do this with any other color than white. It doesn't have to be white, but here, you know, Christmas snow, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't want to have my example too constructed. So let's take this master splattering brush. Just clean this. <clears throat> and I like to have my brush like damp not wet why before I go into the jar I mean if this was soaked with water I couldn't control how much paint I have here how much water I have here because uh, this mixture of white acrylic paint and water is already like you know thin yogurt and that is what I want to have. And I know that this works for me. If I had more water on here, additionally to my mixture here, then that would be not so controllable anymore. Before I splatter to this, I take either a paper where I also need white splatters, like for a background or something, or a scrap paper. I'm going to take this here because I just have it on my desk and I need some collage fodder. Yeah, but you can, can take anything that you have. Then that can also be like a packaging from your trash can or something. Just something where you can test how big the splatters are before you splatter them here. So I'm going to put this here. <clears throat> and then in my eyes, it is really helpful to... Um, put the brush in here and now the paint is on the top and the uh, here on the on under uh, on both sides of the brush yeah so it's the paint is here and here I do it like with nail polish I swipe this over the jar here just like this and I don't turn the brush around now because then the paint would probably go to the other side. Yeah, I leave it just like this. And then I do a little test splattering here. And I can see that these splatters are like nice, but they are at the same time not big enough here for the bottom and for what I want to do. So that means I'm going to take my brush again and dip that in again, but a little bit more than I had before. I test it here again and I can see 
they are bigger now and this is the size I want to have on my card as well so I don't splatter to my test paper here more but I take this and I splatter here because I know that then you know when I have the size here I get approximately the same size here and they will get smaller the more I splatter here when they get too small for my bottom area here and what I want to do here meaning covering this writing up I take more of my paint I do a test splatter ring here so that I know that they don't get too big here on my piece and when I'm satisfied with this I can go on here and at the same time I want to have the splatters getting smaller to the top here um, I think I've said that before that I will put a ton of splatters to this piece for demonstration for the sake of this video in like reality yeah without this video and if I would have this as a journaling card in my journal I would probably do that not so extremely but I want to show you yeah these effects with the splatters really extremely on this piece so that's why I do so much so let's perhaps put a few more here because I can still see the writing there so now it's gone and I think this looks really nice already but we could also try to get a little bit more um, of the white here to the bottom so that the whole card gets weight on the bottom here somehow you know with with white everything seems to be lighter than it was before and I don't mean light you know not not light and dark darkness do you know what i mean but uh weight wise it it seems that when you have white on the bottom of a card that the card has no bottom anymore and that the women here are like flying in the air a little bit but let's try to put more of the white here i mean <laughs> does that make sense probably not but <laughs> if you cover this up a little bit more with with some more of the splatters then you have the feeling that um, I mean there's still no bottom but it's like somehow like a frame now when this is whiter than it was before uh, <laughs> I feel I feel really weird when I say that <laughs> but let's 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 leave it and let's go on so um, let's try to bring like a little snowstorm into this room we can't put this amount of splatters here to the Christmas tree and also not to the women themselves because then they would be covered up completely but how to manage that we get smaller splatters here and how to manage that we get something like a harmonious look of the splattering here in the top right corner there's really much like negative space because he is on only I don't mean that bad but he's only this window which we don't necessarily need for this thing yeah the Christmas tree is important I think this doily or this how is that said you know this uh, placement here below the tree is important the women of course are important the 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 arms here of this woman in the foreground and this little book what she has there that is important to me so I don't want to cover that up too much but I want to have something like this extreme splattering here on the top somewhere as well and a good thing in this case I would think is to use this um, triangle here to do a bit more intense splattering instead of putting such a row here like we have here because then we would cover up the top of the tree and there's a little yeah, it's only half here on the picture there's a little star on the top of the tree and I don't want to cover that up so let's put more splatters here like this then you have the feeling hopefully that you have a connection between the top and the bottom of the card 
And now I want to do a little trick. And for that, we need our heat gun. I mean, you could leave this exactly like it is. Yeah, you could let just let it dry and then everything would be fine. But let's take our heat tool and just um, half dry these or uh, not, not even half, but just a tiny bit, little bit. Then let's take a paper towel. This is dry, by the way. I want to have the intensity of the white in the corner here, like it is here, and also on the bottom. So I only, oh, sorry, I put my paper towel only here. Like, you know, I leave this little triangle there and I press this down. Then I lift this up and I do the same thing with a clean area here on my paper towel here. Make sure that you don't smear the paint that you lift it up with the paper towel to another area that happened to me so often <laughs> but if you fold it and then just use a clean area then that normally doesn't happen and now you can see <clears throat> that you have these little craters instead of totally white splatters and with that the colors of the card come through these translucent areas of these splatters and I think that looks really interesting. Mm, this here looks like it was part of the card from the very beginning. It doesn't look so much like splattered on there and I think it makes it more interesting. And we even got a little heart there. Can you see that? There's a little heart. <laughs> and if you now think, okay, we have a lot of snow here and a lot of snow there, but the rest, I mean, it, it looks like it's cut off here somehow. So let's take a little bit more of the paint. <sighs> and now I'm thinking, because this uh, surface of the card is really a little bit weird, I splatter here to my test piece so that I can get really tiny splatters. And now I do this really fast. I want some here, some around the women. And because they are so small, I just wait a little bit instead of taking my heat tool. And then I take my paper towel and try to get the craters there to the other splatters as well here in the middle. But I want more here. <clears throat> because when you use your heat tool on such small splatters of course they ooh, oh no they dry way faster and then it can happen if you use the heat tool now that <laughs> you dry everything accidentally and that's not what we want but it's it's this what we want i could have waited a little longer i would say because this is really translucent now but it looks somehow interesting and what i I'm trying to demonstrate here is the connection between this part of the splattering and this part of the splattering. If you uh, would leave this area just like blank, you would always see that, yeah, you have splattered to it after the card was produced. Do you know what I mean? And this way, it looks like it has been there since the card has been printed. I think that looks really interesting and <clears throat> hopefully you can see that you can't see the writing anymore. There's a tiny little bit visible here of course otherwise we would have um, uh, we uh, I mean if we wanted to cover this up completely we would have needed to, to take paint and you know paint it completely but <laughs> this way you can't read it anymore and that was the goal and I think that is really was successful. And yeah, so let's let this dry. <clears throat> and perhaps you could already see on my test page here that with this kind of brush, you can splatter really mm, controlled and where you want to splatter. So let's make an example for exactly that because I want you to see that it is possible with th this kind of brush that you can also decide for example to splatter only here around uh, where is it where is it good perhaps 
mm, let's let's say we want to splatter around the flowers a little bit to the flowers so that it looks not so separated and perhaps a little bit around her head here and around the bow. So then we can take this and I want to have really tiny splatters and I will not put my hand here now so that you can see that I will not splatter to her face with this. I hold it here, my splatters shall go directly here mm, to the area which is below the brush and I do it like this. A few are flying to another area, yes, but the most of them are landing here. I'm realizing that this is a little bit too small, so let's take a bit more paint. And you can see they are exactly there where you want to have them. With the other tools, like the nozzles from the spray bottles, for example, or also the other brushes, you have seen that the splatters went everywhere. And with this, it's really, yeah, nearly controllable. Some of the splatters landed on her hair. Yes. How can you avoid that? Just hold your hand here. Or take like a piece of paper and hold it here if you don't want to splatter to your hand. But also my arm, you can see there is nothing. Yeah, It doesn't fly around so much. This here only came because I hold um, the brush like so. And when I splatter to the other card, of course, I splatter to my mat. But take a look. This is just a tiny little bit. Yeah, I've just moved the mat a little um, to the top so that you can see that here is nothing this is from you know from before but here is no paint and this is just this little space which is like dirty now yeah but it uh, can't fly around in my my whole room and destroy my other things and um stain my other uh, tools and things that i have around here uh, some people take <clears throat> for example a piece of paper to cover the face in this case, or other areas mm, when they splatter. Uh, let's uh, let's do th something. I don't I don't want to ruin my card, but I want to show you <laughs> what I'm talking about. Let's say uh, here this writing here was an area which you want to have without splatters. Could make sense because it's a writing there. This could also be her face, this could also be like the flowers or whatever. Some people take a piece of paper and cover that up to make sure that the splatters don't come to this area. So now let's do that. Let's splatter there to the corner. And also for demonstration, I do this a little more extreme than I normally would do it, yeah, so that you can see that really well and that you can see what could happen to your piece if you would do it like this. I don't say that this is bad, but <laughs> you will see in a second, hopefully, what happens if you do it like this. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I, I need a little sip of my coffee. To be honest, it's already the next day <laughs> when I uh, when I started this. It's it was today, and the rest of the video was yesterday. And I had a technical problem yesterday evening. You can't believe it. I had to um, turn off all of my el electricity in the whole caravan here because uh, I couldn't solve the problem in another way. And my, my laptop was like, you know, it was like uh, everything, the whole screen was blue suddenly and I couldn't um, find out why. Oh, it has driven me crazy. So it's, <laughs> it's actually, that's uh, the reason why I tell you that this is my, you know, uh, I think third coffee for today. Mm. And that brings me a little time problem, but that uh, doesn't shall be your problem. But look, this is extreme. Yes, I did that 
more extreme than I would do it in reality, but I want to show you what could happen. Can you see that the splatter free area is like this rectangle? In this case, it could even look nice if we would imagine we had more splatters here. I mean, we can quickly do that. Then it can even look nice to have this free area there. This looks a little bit like it was a frame around this writing there. But please imagine you want to make a snowy area around her and you would cover her face with such a rectangled piece of paper. Then you would have this rectangled shape in your snow. And in my eyes, and that's only my personal opinion, that looks not nice. These tiny splatters, which have accidentally uh, flown to fly, flew, they have been flown, they flew, <laughs> they were flying, they have been flying, whatever. They came to her hair, here a little bit, here, and also one which is like next to her eye. These are the splatters which make this interesting in my eyes and which make this girl more alive. I mean, she is printed on this card and this card is really old. And yeah, this girl um, probably, I mean, yeah, she has hopefully grown up and then got older. But this person has probably already passed away. And if I think about that and about the meaning behind such a card and the treasure that such a card is, then I want this girl to be alive again and I want to honor her in some way and I want to, yeah, respect that I can have her on my card here because, you know, she, she has lived in, in the past, yeah, and... With that and with these splatters, that can happen because they she is then alive a little bit more. But if you would imagine you would have this rectangle around here, that would look so weird. And also, if we don't look like mm, to this worth that such a card can have for to us. Also, just um, if you look mm, with an artsy perspective to this this connects the girl with the background way better she doesn't look so fallen out anymore when she has only these tiny little white things on her hair or also here <clears throat> where where the splatters go to uh, her arm and the blouse here a little bit <clears throat> that makes it more connected to the background in my eyes Speaking about background, <clears throat> what if we had a postcard and let's say we want to do something really easy, really fast, we don't have time, <laughs> we want to, for example, make a nice Valentine's card or we want to make a birthday card, but we want to use like things that we already have, like this postcard, for example. And we want to do that easy but artsy. Yeah. <laughs> so we could come to the idea to take such a postcard and a paper doll. Too big. Let's see. First, I thought this family would be good, but I want to have something where you can still see the flowers really well. And I want to show you something that is really fast and really in my eyes yeah if you never have have never done it i think it's a little impressive <laughs> when i did it the first time i was really impressed so let's say we want to put this woman here i think that uh the colors i mean you can see this is not completely black and white the colors fit really well to this here to this color here in the background but if I would glue her here, just like so, uh, this would look a little bit weird. I mean, you would think, okay, uh, she has glued it down. Yeah, of course. 
<laughs> of course, you can do that. But I want to show you something where you can really easily and really quickly put your own twist to this card. So we take this away. <clears throat> we have in mind that this is like not black and white, but a little greenish somehow. Sapia greenish. And then we look to the card. And I like to think about um, a background color, which is really massive on the card. Meaning, if I look here, I can see this yeah, grayish, greenish stuff. Here's a little bit yellow. Here it gets lighter. Perhaps we can have that in mind for a second as well. And here it is like brownish. Yeah, but mm, do I think you would agree that both of these areas here, if I lift my hand now, you can see them again, are the main background color. Because here it's so dark, that is massive. And that makes it like main somehow and here as well. So let's take some uh, brushed corduroy distress paint because that comes really close to that there on the bottom. Let's take some vintage photo distress paint because there's also some of this reddish color. Also this thing here, uh, this pot where the flowers are in is really, it will be covered up by the paper door later, but it's, this color is also in here, in this orange. There's also, you know, somehow this vintage photo color, really hard for me to explain. And let's take um, for this here some weathered wood. You could also think about something more greenish, but I use what I have here at the moment and I try to get this color with what I have here. I also have forest moss and you can see the browns are here for this and I put the other color combination for that here into you know another spot on my mat so that I can't mix them accidentally and then I do the trick I look at my uh, paintbrush water sorry I will take these out so that you can see the color better Ooh, oh no <laughs> holy no eh? can you see <clears throat> this color is good <laughs> looks a little bit weird but this is really good because even if you don't I mean you can see that this color fits to this yeah it, it would fit this doesn't fit to this but that doesn't matter it will work dirty water can always help to get what I want to have here if you had like pink and purple or something like, for example, abandoned coral or something like that here. And you would have this kind of water that would probably be not so good. But if we talk about neutral colors, yeah, this is really neutral. And we have something dirty like this. That is good. If you have the neutral colors here and you have pink water, don't do this trick. Look, if this is harmonious, what you have, do you know what I mean? And then use the water because... If we now take our splatter brush and we mix this, we get a dirty version of this. And that makes this whole thing really interesting. Believe me. Please just believe me, okay? <laughs> so, let's take this. I want to splatter here. And now I have to be a little fast because... I want to do this trick with the craters in a second. I try to get more here to cover the writing up and to give the paper doll a little bit yeah, of something to, to stand on. I try to get smaller splatters the more I come to the top. I leave this area free for the other color combination and this looks a lot I know <laughs> please just keep calm <laughs> so then we can take this mix that splatter this here 
I try to get bigger splatters here to the corner so that we get the same connection like with the snow a second ago. Just like this, I take my heat tool and dry this, but not completely. While I'm drying this, I have in mind that this card is glossy and that if I won't use my heat tool, this paint would take a long time to air dry. That is a difference compared to this kind of material, which is matte and more like, you know, normal paper. I stop uh, drying this when I can see that the tiny splatters are already completely dry. When you look against the light a little bit, then you can see that. Then I take a dry paper towel, put this on here carefully, press really hard and hope for the best. Lift this off and be happy. <laughs> Because now we have put these flowers into the background. We have added our own artsy twist to this frame. And mm, the colors of the image here go to the frame now. Yeah, Because here we have tried to get this brown from the table where the flowers are standing on. And this brown goes now to the frame which makes it really interesting in my eyes. The same here, we have put this like greenish, grayish, muddy color on here, but it's at the same time on the frame, which makes it really interesting. And the goal of this is to turn this really like into a background. So I will dry this completely. I can see here still a little bit of wet paint. So that I can make sure that I don't uh, smear the splatters in a second. And if we now take our paper doll and put her again here, you can hopefully see that this looks way more harmonious. She looks not so fallen out from the world anymore. No matter where you put her, would um, also look nice when she's here on the right, then you would see more of the flowers. Perhaps, perhaps a little bit like this. And now you could think, okay, now I have my splatters on the background, but um, the paper doll is still like naked, the naked material, I mean. But what I also wanted to show you with this is that you don't, um, always have to put your splatters in the very end to your project. Many people, um, and I had this, like, you know, this thought, these thoughts as well in the past. I always thought I add my splatters in the very beginning, uh, sorry, in the very end, sorry, like a finishing touch to my project. But if you splatter here and then at this you get can get way more dimension but just with splattering yeah not with you know we haven't glued any like uh where's my prayer pieces of paper for making a collage behind her or something like that this is not not much effort i mean it's two pieces and a little bit of paint two pieces of paper and a little bit of paint i mean Hopefully you can see that it looks totally different now than before. But of course, I totally agree if you now say she is like connected more with the background. The background is more backgroundish, but she is still a little bit separated. So let's take our brush corduroy and vintage photo bag. Let's put a little bit of that here. The main point here. I would say is this area here where the dress touches the floor here or, or this yeah in this case it's a floor because she the, the flowers are standing on a table perhaps but she's not standing on the table do you know what I mean <laughs> so let's take our dirty water bag which fits our color palette here 
Let's then take this. Oh, that is a little bit too much vintage photo, perhaps. Let's add a tiny little bit more of the brushed corduroy. Because now I want to make this area here uh, a little bit more yeah, harmonious as well. And I want to connect the bottom of her dress with the floor here by splattering to this area and a little bit to her dress. And in this case, I will not do the technique with the paper towel, but I will just let this dry as it is so that these splatters are really intense and opaque so that you have the feeling that these splatters are in the foreground, then the paper doll is behind, and what we do have done before with the paper towel is in the background. That way you get three different layers of dimension. But, you know, that's my personal thinking about this. So we have uh, these splatters here, they will stay opaque, but we don't have those opaque splatters anywhere else on the card. If I look here, I can see that this is really light and here's perhaps a good area to put a few of these splatters just like this to connect this. If you are like Barbara from 49 Dragonflies, then you could think I need a third area where this brown opaque style of splatters is. Then just do it like this. Appreciate these splatters which have landed on her head. Take a Q-tip because a little bit is here on her eye. We don't want that. But the good thing with the paper dolls is you can just remove that. Yeah, just with a dry Q-tip. Um, and this is now really brownish, isn't it? So perhaps we can also get a connection between this massive frame and the, the inside here as well. Because um, even if we have splattered to the frame, the frame is still really frame-ish, isn't it? So let's take... A little bit of our, our white paint from here. I will put that here to my mat and it, I take the tiniest amount of, of this because the frame is not completely white and I don't want to have my splatters completely white. So perhaps a little more. And then we can think where could this look good here the flowers are also really light and she has this light thing on her neck here so perhaps we could make something like this like you know start from here to the flowers connect the flowers then with her neck and let this like you know get smaller into this direction and now you can hopefully see that when I do this I can just follow this line that I have decided for a second ago. And with this kind of brush, I can do exactly this yeah, way of splattering I've decided for before I started. Meaning it's really controllable. Uh, and yeah, I hope that you can see the difference compared to what we had before. I know this is a lot. Again, I have done this in this way to demonstrate what you can do with splattering. Yeah, But at the same time, even if I think I wouldn't do such extreme splattering in like a normal journal without the camera, I think this is a good way to, on the one hand, practice those techniques. And on the other hand, I really like this. <laughs> and with doing this video and that's the same if you would sit uh, at home and practice something like this or something else with these kind of yeah practice sessions on your own craft desk 
you can at the same time find things that you like by coincidence because if I practice this and I do a lot of splattering here and I know that I won't do that normally in my channels I at the same time have the chance to like this in the end and to find something new I can do in my future journals on purpose yeah if I don't do such ex extreme splattering and that's the same with any other technique as well I can't know if I would like it and to be honest <laughs> I really think that this is cool I mean it's it's extreme yes and it's somehow a little you know unusual but I really like this and imagine you do this Without the need of explaining it, then you could do something like this really in 10 minutes. Yeah, If you have forgotten that you need a birthday card and you have to leave your house in 15 minutes, then take out a paper doll, your paint and this card and you would have done this in just no time. Imagine a little quote here, which says, yeah, in, in this case of the example, like happy birthday or something like that, then you would be done in, in minutes. And I really, really like that. And... um especially on um, let's say areas where yeah you want the splattering really where you need it <laughs> do you know what i mean and not not somewhere this kind of brush is really really helpful because um, i mean this is probably the wrong color let's mix this so that it gets a little bit more brown but you can see what i mean even if this is probably not the right color for this I need more water. This is not liquid enough. Because what I am trying to say is, if you, for example, have a printed page for your journal, let's say you have these abstract flowers, and you say, okay, I like the flowers, but I want to have um, some more interest on here. I want to turn this digital page into my own, and I want to splatter to the flowers to make them more alive. What could you do? You could ex could do exactly what we've done on the other card. You could think, okay, here's the center of the flower, so perhaps it looks good if we have some splatters here. And now let's 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 do something that would be not the reality, so that you can see it better. Let's say I will even I will even take a pencil and um, uh, here I take the watercolor pencil f uh, by Tim Holtz and Ranger. I will make a line now which I want to follow with my splattering. So that it's just for demonstration. Let's say you want to splatter like this for some weird reason. <laughs> then you can take this and without these like weird rows of splatters, which we had before, you can just follow this line with your splattering. This is weird, I know, but I, what I want to show you is that you can get the splatters exactly there where you want to have them. And of course, the more water you have, the more opaque they get. Uh, sorry. Oh, Louise. I always, I always mix these words. The more water you have, the more translucent they get. The less water you have, the more opaque they get. Uh, the more water and the more paint you have, the bigger they get. But, you know, you can follow exactly this line without having the splatters everywhere on your page. This is the weirdest example I ever had in a video, but I hope you can, can see what I mean. And... Then I also want to, and that is uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this video, but I got a ton of questions uh, about the watercolor pencils by Ranger and how I use those for making splatters. And first I thought, uh, where's the problem? <laughs> to be honest, I thought, where's the problem? But um, it seems that some of you had the feeling that this is the same like the crayon but only in like a different look and in a different package but it isn't 
The Distress Crayon and the Distress Watercolor Pencil are two completely different mediums. They are not the same. On some pictures in, for example, online shops, I agree that when you see uh, the tip of this when it's new and you see the tip of such a crayon when it's new, you could think it's somehow the same. But it isn't. This is a crayon. This is a watercolor pencil. Yeah. And they have different, uh, not only different ingredients, but they are made for different techniques. Yeah. So if you want to um, see the difference in detail, please visit Tim Holt's YouTube channel and watch the videos about the crayons and the watercolor pencils. He also has demonstrated a few of the differences in the last video where you know the last ranger demo video where the last three sets of watercolor pencils came out you can watch that there he has made techniques with these and techniques with these and you can see the difference directly i don't want to go into detail about that in this video because that would be too much but i wanted to give you a little help and where you can find more information because there have been so many questions about that so this is not the same yeah but uh, you can use both of these for splattering as well, of course. If I So let's quickly do this because I think this is a little harder to understand if you have never used it. That sounds a little bit weird, but I think it is, it, it is like that. If you want to use the crayon for splattering, I would suggest to not put the water to here, to the tip, because it can happen that when you, you know, take your water brush and you put it here that the water comes into this little uh, pen body here and that is not a good idea because that this guy is water soluble so i like to scribble a little bit here to my mat you could use like a plastic surface like a plastic bag or um you know plastic cd sleeve or something like that if you don't have the mat and then I take my brush. I could use the dirty water, of course, as well, but in this case, I don't want to do that because Uncharted Mariana is just <laughs> such a great color. So I splatter a little bit of water, uh, spritz a little bit of water, mix this, and then I can just splatter like I would do it with any other medium as well. <coughs> that's that with these little guys it's if you have never done it perhaps a little harder uh, if you have uh, not so much experience with the watercolor pencils themselves so what I like to do is I like to put a little bit of water to my table load my brush up with the water and then I go over here and at the same time I rotate the pencil. That way the pigment in the pencil gets activated and you can load up your brush with the pigment, with it, which is then mixed with the water, of course. Mm. When I first did this, I was like, hmm, perhaps it's not my favorite kind of splatter medium because I did something wrong. Uh, or not wrong, but not long enough. Because this here, it needs a little bit to get activated. If you would take your brush and go only one time over the tip here, I'm sorry, I'm just smearing it on my finger, that would be not enough. The pencil needs a little time to get this like a little creamy consistency. Can you see? And then it's really intense. It's really, 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 really intense. Let's take a dry pencil to compare that. Let's take this one. So this is dry. Let's say you would just put a little bit of water to this and then do that. <clears throat> can you see the difference? You can see this is translucent and it would be translucent when you splatter with this 
to your paper as well. This is like really, nearly like a really, yeah, like like a lip uh, stick which um, was too long too long in the sun or something. This is really creamy, and if you wait a little bit with this one here, can you see the difference? And it's just a few seconds. I've wait I've waited, and I haven't touched this with my pencil. Uh, sorry, I haven't touched this with my brush yet. Just with waiting a little bit, you get this intense color here instead of having this like, yeah, translucent kind of thing. With that in mind, and with the wish that I can splatter with this medium to my paper, here is blue. It's really dark, isn't it? I mean, in t not dark, but intense. Let's take a little more water so that we are sure that the brush is loaded up really, really well and at the same time that we have enough water in the brush. Now you could think this is going to turn turquoise or something because it's a watercolor pencil. It's, you know, if you, if you think about watercolor pencil, you could think this is going to become translucent, right? But let's dry this. And while this is drying, I can already uh, perhaps show you something that I uh, made in the German video. So this is another um, green. This was crushed olive. But it is also one of my alcohol ink papers, but from the volume one set. But can you see how opaque the watercolor pencil is on this paper. It is crazy. In my eyes, that is just crazy. If you wouldn't look closer, you would think that this was made with acrylic paint. But it isn't. It's the watercolor pencil. And even on the blue here, look, it's opaque. And that is really, really amazing. And you even get these watercolor effects on the splatters themselves because look, there are also those like tiny variations and there's really, yeah, they, they don't look just in the, they are not just one color, but they also have these little craters around, which comes from drying them and, you know, watercolor, yeah, yeah? <laughs> this watercolor effect compared to the crayon. I mean, uh, I often splatter with the crayon as well, but the crayon is a bit more translucent, I would say, in the most cases. And here, I don't know if you can see that, the color is, you know, you can see a little bit through it. I mean, it also looks completely different. Yeah, the, the splatters look completely different. I hope you, that you can see that. It's a nice effect as well, but um, for me, if I would would have to choose between both of these mediums for splattering, I would definitely always take the watercolor pencil if I had the choice. I don't say that it's not possible because we could just see that it is possible and that it looks nice, yeah, but um, I like this better somehow. And... Um, What uh, else I, did, did I, I wanted to say something else? Ah, uh, yes. And um, if you think, okay, um, I need something to splatter with, but I need colors. Yeah. And I have, for example, some ink pads and some oxide ink pads already. And I want to splatter to my projects in the Ranger colors or any other brand. Yeah. That doesn't have to be Ranger. But you think, okay white and black is nice i can get that with uh here acrylic paint from the dollar store or whatever i can do that that is easy but what if i want to have colors and then colors perhaps that match my other colors you could think okay i could buy the distress paints and i love these paints yeah please don't get me wrong i want to come to a point um which 
is, I would say, something where you could consider the one or the other thing. Because if you think, um, I want to buy these, but I only need them for splattering, to be honest, I won't do that. I won't buy the paints if I won't do anything else with them because they can dry out if you don't use them. But if you want to have colors for splattering, why don't you then buy these because they can't dry out? Do you know what I mean? Um, if you think, okay, I don't, um, you know, uh, draw with watercolor pencils, but I also don't paint with distress paint or acrylic paint, buy these because they can't dry out. If you say, yes, I want to splatter in various different colors and I also use acrylic paint for other projects, yeah, then this is great. But if you search for an alternative to this for splattering because you don't use acrylic paint for other things, then buy these. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes, because sometimes you think, you know, the first thought is, yes, I can splatter with paint. Yeah, I can splatter with something which is liquid. And perhaps if you are new to those mediums, you don't think um, about splattering with these because when you see something like this and you see it's a pencil, then you think, ah, it's for this. Yeah, like, you know, uh, use it like this. And you don't think about the other advantages of this and the other techniques that you could do with something like this. And that's what I was trying to say here with my speech. <laughs> So I hope, I really hope that you could get some inspiration from this and I'm really hoping that you enjoyed our time together. I really enjoyed that we could do this here again in another video of this Drunk Journal Bucket List series. And yeah, I will think about the next things that will come in the future. I have still some things to do which I want to share with you. And I'm hoping, of course, that we will see for the next Junk Journal Bucket List video as well. And I hope that you have a very creative time. And no matter what you have done today while watching this, uh, I hope that you are um, satisfied with what you have on your desk because that is the most important thing. You have to be satisfied with what you have, no matter what it is. Or if other people like it, <laughs> the main point is that you have to like it and that you have to be satisfied with it. So see you the next time and have a great day. Bye bye.